a few questions on how, how you get into your process. Fantastic. For instance, are you are writing a new book with a provocative title. Where did you get the idea for the title and the book? Well, the, the <clears throat> thank you, that's a great question. Um, the actual genesis of the book itself came before the title. Um, I knew I wanted to write something and um, my wife, Nancy Lee and I, um, uh, got a membership at Descanso Gardens, which is this beautiful gardens in um, La Cañada. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, stunning. And so we got the, got, the, um, uh, got the membership. And then on the following Monday, I, um, I went to the gardens at 8 a.m. in the morning. It was a, a, a sunny uh, or a, a soon to be hot um, August day. And um, it was like the first or second of August. Um, and I walked around and found this, this seat by uh, the stream in um, what's close to something they call the ancient forest, which is a forest of redwoods. Um, and I found that to be utterly charming. And I sat down at the seat and um, knew I wanted to write it by pen rather than by, um, by computer. Uh, so I had uh, a pen with me and some writing uh, papers. And I sat down and I just waited for an inspiration about what to say first. And um, that came to me. And uh, I spent probably four hours that first day um, by the stream, by the and um, writing. And for the next approximately 60 days, I went to Descanso Gardens every morning at eight and wrote for between four to five hours, usually five pages handwritten, sometimes seven. And it, uh, it not only served to uh, give me a really nice flow to the writing, but it also served to uh, help me to feel um, balanced in in my in a serene place. That's a very meditative approach to writing. A very beautiful approach. Uh, uh, it's a luxury that that many people, many writers, don't <laughs> have. Uh, after you got the idea. How did you approach writing it? Did you outline the ideas? How did you go about um, it? Well, for the first week or so, I just wrote. I didn't bother with an outline. And um, after the first week, I thought to myself, well, <laughs> to have some kind of organization, I should develop an outline. So I, I sat at home and, and actually, I, I think I went to the, the Descanso and wrote up an outline and came home that night and typed it out and um, on the computer and printed it um, and brought it with me to the garden the next day. And for the next 57, 55 days, I completely ignored it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they say it's good to get away from it. Uh, give it I, some breathing space. Yes, I got completely away from it. Um, well, at what stage are you in uh, writing the book now? Well, the main body of the book is done. Um, it, um, it went out for reviews. Um, I sent it out for uh, reviews to uh, six or seven different um, people. Um, and I wanted to make sure I had a variety of different inputs. Uh, so for example, one of them is a rocket, an actual rocket scientist. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, one was a nurse. I wanted to get some sort of medical kind of a, opinion there. Another was a lawyer. Uh, another was an artist. Um, and my niece, whose who's, who's one claim to fl fl fame is that she, during her third grade year, re read during the school year 300 books. Oh, wow. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, so she was, she's quite the reader. Uh, and I appreciate her feedback. Mm. Yeah, as well as everyone's feedback. Yeah. Um, 
So I just now received that feedback from everyone. Um, and I had gone through trying to trying to find a title. Um, I had spent the past month or so trying to figure out a title. Um, um, basically, um, uh, I, I'm a runner, so I, during my runs, I would try to think of a title, and that was two to three hours of running sometimes. <laughs> mm. uh, so I'd forget most of the titles I'd even thought of during the run, unfortunately. Um, but um, one title that came to me that's quite intriguing, I'm not sure if this will be a final title or not, is um, is AA's Missing Step. Um, I thought that was an intriguing title in it. Um, Do you want to tell us what, what, what that means, what the book's about? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> well, I, I have... I, I, I no longer really am in 12 step programs. I, I, I'm not, this, I'm not participating in that, in that at this point, but for a number of years I did. And um, I would, I, I'm a writer. So when my sponsor person, person who, who was, um, you know, ahead of me a little bit, asked me to write, write an inventory, I would. And I wrote 17 different inventories during mm. my 40 some years in, in 12 step. Um, and um, one of the, uh, uh, and my last sponsor basically said to me, um, we had been over my material and we spent countless hours in his incredibly cold garage doing inventory and me reading stuff to him. <laughs> And he, he said, well, Scott, you know, um, I've heard all your stuff and it seems like there's the same pattern over and over again through that appears through your material. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, really? And he said, yeah. And, and that's what, what I call a sponsoring thought. And, and he said that sponsoring thought um, um, controls or, or sponsors actively uh creates all the rest of your thought so if you figure out what that sponsoring thought is you'll be 10 steps closer to being free and i said okay and i said well, well what is my sponsoring thought because i'm kind of lazy sometimes and he said i'm not going to tell you your sponsoring thought it's you to figure that that out it's your job and it took me two or three years of just like uh, you know, that, and this, and that, and finally I got to, you know, what the sponsoring thought was. Um, it happened for me, and I believe for most people, uh, when I was quite young, between the ages of uh, zero to seven, and um, it was in two parts, mine was. Um, the first was uh, when I was four, uh, I was, um, brutalized and traumatized by a group of men um, who then who then foisted the lie upon you know upon it um, and so that part of the sponsoring thought was men in groups will hurt you and then lie about it mm. and then after a while uh, when I was seven or eight um, I um, I uh, had a really uh, terrible reaction to some spaghetti because it reminded me of bloodshed. Oh. And my mother tried to strangle me because I threw it up on the rug and oh. it, we, we were at a, um, we were at a, a highly regarded writer's uh, house and, and I laughed. And so she wasn't, she, she couldn't stand that. So she, she did that. Um, you know, gratefully she was able to make amends for that later and she would owned it, and I, I'm completely done with that. But the sponsoring thought from that became in women, well, a woman, as particularly a close woman, will try to kill you. Mm. So men in groups will hurt you, and women will try to kill you. Mm. So it, it's pretty self defeating. There wasn't many other groups <laughs> left after that. Um, so I grew up most of my life hiding and um and staying behind things and 
kind of almost like writing in secret. You know, I'd write a, a book and I'd be done with it and then I wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything that would actually try to get it published because I was still under <coughs> <coughs> those two sponsoring thoughts. Um, so the sponsoring thought um, is something that happens when you're young and normally when you're when you're quite young you have uh, this beautiful serene sort of idyllic relationship with your mother for a while who you know is the world to you and um or your if you don't have a mother your your guardian a parent um but at some point uh there's a rupture in that and in, in mine i had the two ruptures i talked about um so the world gets to be really unsafe really quickly and you need to invent a story to understand why the world got crazy with you and so that's the that's the story that i created was those two stories that it became one story really and everything else throughout the rest of my life was was played out around those two stories i see so right. that's that's the missing step from the 12-step program Right, right. Uh, identifying the sponsoring thought. And then the second part is um, asking God uh, uh, for a new sponsoring thought, which I did. And what I eventually got was um, uh, love, uh, love animates the universe, period. So that's my, my new sponsoring thought, which you can see is much more positive and will stead me in much better, hasn't already and will continue to stead me in much better uh, place um, as I go forward in living my, in the rest of my life. Yeah, that's a, that's a much more positive approach. Uh, let me ask you, what do you wish the, your book to accomplish? What are you trying to say? Um, I would like, like people to know that no matter where they are in their journey, that no matter how far they've gone in any direction, it's possible to reclaim a, an entirely positive experience of your life by changing your sponsoring thought. First identifying and then changing your sponsoring thought. <clears throat> I see. Uh, tell us about other books you have written. I know you've written quite a few. Tell us about some of them. Um, sure. Uh, the, well, I started off writing um, short stories. I wrote 50 short stories oh. um, back in 1982. And then I also, I went to the library at UCSB and found a book called, um, what's the name of it? But it was essentially how to write plays. So that, that six month period, I wrote four plays. Mm. Um, two comedies and one tragedy and one I don't even know what to call it. Um, so that sort of kick-started me on my writing. And over the next, um, then I moved to Boston. Um, and in Boston, I wrote um, 250 or 300 um, poems um, that I bound into a book called The Distance Nearing. <clears throat> a lot of them were uh, relationship <clears throat> uh, poems uh, for, you know, for the loved one, you know, kind of thing. Um, so that's the first part. Um, over the next 10 years from 1982 to, to present, essentially, I've written 10 screenplays. Um, um, yeah, 10 screenplays. I had one, one that I got close to optioning, but then the the uh, producer wanted me to write it, rewrite it one more time, and I'd already rewritten it like 60 times, so I just said no and went on and began to teach elementary school instead. Mm. Um, the books started with that poetry book, and then the first book after that was, um, I was kind of stuck on writing, you know, a, a, a screenplay. I didn't really want to do that, and also kind of wanted to write a book. So a friend of mine who had knew that I did uh, professional um, cooking and healing um, said, well, why don't you write, you do a, like a, um, a class and write a little book for the class, like a 10 to 15 page book for the class with, with a couple stories 
Um, I'm also really big on writing um, little prayers or affirmations for the book. Um, so I did that and I wrote eight of those and then I bound it into a book called, at that point, Hip Hop Sushi. Um, Which I read, yes. Right, right. Quite yeah. entertaining. Thank you. So that was the first book and um, over the next 10 to 12 years um, from 08 to 20 or so, 20, yeah, uh, I wrote uh, seven spiritually oriented cookbooks, uh, including a book of, uh, of 1,098 prayers and meditations for the chef. Uh, oh my uh, goodness. Yep. And then I wrote... <laughs> Yeah, I, it's, it's, it's interesting to me that like, like people talk about what a process it is to write. And for me, that's not the case. It's um, it, that book of the 1098 prayers. I wrote that in 60 days. Mm. Um, so I was writing 17 point something um, prayer meditations or contemplations per day for the book. Um, and the latest book that I just wrote that we talked about briefly, the Sponsoring Thought book, um, I wrote that in 60 days as well. Um, the bulk of the book, there's peripheral stuff, you know, um, like acknowledgments and forward and stuff that I hadn't written, but um, but in my, my experience is that I write very quickly um, and I, I tend to write basically inspired by my muse, you know. Yeah, so I wrote seven cookbooks. I wrote a couple children's um, fables. One, one for for AA, um, like the principles, twelve principles, uh, for short stories for kids, um, legends. What else did I write? Uh, well, you've not... been qu quite prodigious. Um, <laughs> you've written a lot more than a lot of other people have. Um, more than I could really <laughs> turn out in a lifetime, I think. But let me ask you, have you felt the support of the uh, book writing and publishing community in your efforts to writing books? Um, well, because of my, my injuries, the things I described at the beginning, um, I was unable, unable and unwilling to ask for the appropriate kind of help from from book writing communities and whatnot, and from agents and publishers. So I took it upon myself to publish everything I wrote uh, myself and to um, uh, essentially learn how to self-publish, which I did. Um, and um, so I, 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 I have friends like you who encouraged me, who, who is also a writer, pretty prolific writer yourself, and uh, who you've always encouraged me um, to just stay in the process, in the in the um, in the flow of the writing process. Um, and I have several other friends who who you know we do that for each other. You know. Why do you enjoy writing? Um, it's a little bit like why do you enjoy eating <laughs> or do you really like to breathe that much <laughs> it's it's on that level kind of uh, I've always at least since 1982 I've written um pretty consistently um I'm always writing something um even as if it's a Facebook post or a um just a you know an article or something um, I just, I really, uh, it's one of the things that makes me feel, uh, connected to who I am at the deepest level. Yeah. Why do you write? Yeah, well, that's the question I guess all writers are asked. I write because I have to, I mean, I don't know how not to write. <laughs> right. I've been a writer since I was a kid myself and I just, just must write. So I do. And I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I feel I feel like there's no time when I'm writing. It, it's it's like it's timeless. It, it doesn't exist in 
in the normal um, quadrangle of of um, of reality. You know. Uh, let me ask you: uh, What is your Tell us about your education. How did you prepare for writing? Um, well, let's see. My mother and father were both writers. My mother had been, was published several times in magazines. Um, and though she never wrote a, uh, a long, long piece of work, um, she, she was a prodigious um, uh, short story writer. Oh. And she also wrote a lot of poems. My father was a, was a writer, but his, that wasn't his main uh, love. Um, his main love was, was um, creating art. And so for the past, last five years of his life, he created some incredibly beautiful um, um, pictures. And um, yeah, so he, he created that. He also did some other kinds of artwork. Um, my brother writes as well. Um, it's not his first thing, but he's an incredible uh, theater director and mm. a, a brilliant singer. Um, mm. And he was, he was cast in um, Sondheim's only flop, big flop, which was called, um, uh, what's the name of that smooth thing? 1980, uh, I just can't remember the name of it. Um, and my brother at 20 was cast on Broadway uh, by, by Sondheim. And there, was a, there were two, two male leads and Sondheim picked my brother for one of them. Um, mm. But Prince didn't think he was handsome enough. <laughs> oh. So he didn't get the part, um, even though oh. Sondheim wanted him to. Oh. Yeah, look at us. Uh, oh, gosh, I can't remember the name of it. Do right. hmm. you have uh, uh, ideas for future books? Uh, or do you um, back them up? Do you, do you have things you want to do already in the, in the future? I do. Um, I'm, I'm playing with the idea of writing a book called How to Write a Worst Seller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think we, we all, and many of us know how to do that intuitively. <laughs> well, I thought I would codify it. So if anybody really desperately needs to write a, a worst seller, they can just ref refer to my book. <laughs> <laughs> of course, if it sold any copies, it wouldn't be a worst seller anymore. But <laughs> No, no, it wouldn't. Self-defeating. Uh, what, what do you think of the current state of independent publishing? You call it self-publishing, which it was called for a very long time. Um, but now they're really like in films calling independent uh, publishing. What, what do you think about the, the possibilities for current independent publishing? Well, I think it, if you're a writer, you need to figure out what am I in this for as far as a particular book? So if you're in it, in it for prestige and, you, and you're and you okay with waiting for the money and um, taking a big risk, then a traditional publisher is a good idea. However, if, if you have uh, like a nonfiction book, like this book I'm, I, I just finished, um, um, and you wanna actually, 